Hi, welcome to the third and final part of Lecture 6, Triple E 107. We're still talking about linear continuous wave modulation. And uh, in this part of the lecture, we will be talking about a compromise between VSVSC and SSB, which is the vestigial sideband or VSV. Right. And we'll also talk about how to analyze the signals. Uh, generally, uh, if you have a high frequency uh, signal translated to a high frequency, a bandpass signal, we can actually transform it to a what we call a complex baseband equivalent. And using the complex baseband equivalent, we're able to analyze the signal and uh, able to analyze the signal and uh, easily get the power instead of just trying to uh, solve for the power of the signal using uh, what the current expressions that we have. There's a cosine carrier, there's, there's a sine carrier, and so on and so forth. Using a bandpass to baseband transformation will make things easier for us. Okay. So first, a review of the last lecture, I introduced to you the DSBSC and the SSB. Okay. So the main difference here is that uh, for SSB, you're only using one side band of your original signal to transmit information. Okay. And it saves bandwidth compared to DSBSC. However, uh, the SSB signal is difficult to implement. So a practical issue is that we cannot find a bandpass filter we cannot find a bandpass filter that is that has an ideal response. It's not practical to implement a bandpass filter with an ideal response. So it requires very selective filters, and it's actually not really practical. Don't can implement that. And for a phase discrimination method, which is easier compared to the frequency discrimination method, right, we need an exact 90 degree phase shifter. Okay, for we need a strict 90 degree out of phase between the two carriers, this cosine carrier and the sine carrier. And it's not gonna, going to be practical for wide band signals. So if you have wide band signals, we won't, uh, it's difficult to design a wide band phase shifter for wide band signals. Okay, so a compromise can be taken between the two. If we want to save some bandwidth, we want to save some bandwidth and we want to reduce some power of your DSBSC signal, right? but we, uh, we are limited by our resources to implement them, we can use the vestigial, vestigial sideband modulation. And here we go again. So there is some form of trade-off between the complexity of the system and the uh, bandwidth and power savings of it so if we compromise some complexity we are able to save some bandwidth but not optimally okay so this vsb modulation does not save power and bandwidth as optimal as an ssb signal but uh, you can use it as a compromise okay so consider an ssb signal okay right here so that signal will be split into two and if we filtered out that using a VSB filter, we can maintain the upper sideband right here and parts of the lower sideband, which is a distorted version of the lower sideband. And that is the vestigial portion of the spectrum. Okay. So a vestigial sideband filter needs to have an odd symmetry about FC where h of fc is equal to 1 half. So the conditions for an, a vestigial sideband filter is seen here. And it has a role of beta, right? the transition bandwidth. Right? So the transition bandwidth is somewhere here. Right? And it has an odd symmetry over that, over this line right here. So the transition bandwidth is or the total bandwidth rather of your uh, vestigial side of your uh, total of your uh, AM wave using a VSB uh, modulation scheme is equal to the bandwidth of the signal plus some beta. Okay. So an example uh, how to generate a vestigial sideband filter. We use the 
ideal unit step function. And then we subtract some h beta of f. Okay? And then translate them to the carrier frequency fc. And we're able to produce a vestigial sideband filter. Okay? This uh, h beta of f here has an odd symmetry. And the theory of operation can be taken from there. The expression for a VSB is taken from your SSB signal, which has a cosine carrier and a sine carrier. We replace this uh, Hilbert transform. The Hilbert transform comes from a unit step function. Okay. So from the Hilbert transform, we, uh, we use some m sub q of t which is equal to m hat of t plus the m beta of t where m beta of t is the output when we convolve the signal with the vestigial sideband filter so if we convolve it with this filter response right here and this is how you express your vestigial sideband in terms of equations and it came from the ssb okay and because of that an additional part of the spectrum will be added, okay, but it's uh, it's not it's not going to be balanced compared to your DSBSC. It won't be symmetric with FC, and it will just be it. You will save some form of bandwidth because of this uh, because of this uh, scheme of vestigial sideband scheme. Okay, so for example. If you have uh, the same message signal and the same carrier signal, but we use this, the following VSB filter, as you can see here, okay, right here, okay, it's a one half, okay, at FC, and it has an odd symmetry according to this line. So this vestigial sideband filter is valid. We can use it for implementing a VSB signal. So to analyze that, if, uh, first is we have a DSBSC signal. So a DSBSC signal using this message will have uh, this spectrum right here. The location of the spikes here, the impulse here, this is FC plus FM. And this is FC minus FM. And it will be reflected on the negative side of the spectrum. By applying the vestigial sideband filter, uh, you will have... Some uh, response, uh, the, the, low, the lower side band will be filtered out, but not completely, okay? while the upper side band will be maintained. Okay? And the total power of your vestigial side band will be based on the spectrum here. Since they are just delta functions, you just compute for their magnitudes and you square them and you add them all up. And you get this power for the vestigial sideband filter okay so to to demodulate a vestigial sideband uh vestigial sideband wave or a vsb wave since the sum of the vestige uh the sum of the vestige sideband recovers the spectrum of the original message we can translate the vestigial sideband signal okay to the uh, to the center, okay, by using a product modulator, again, with the coherent detection. And we use the low-pass filter to eliminate the high-frequency components. Okay? And, because, and when we add these two, okay, our original message can be recovered. Okay? So a part of the vestige, if you align them properly, if you align the vestiges properly and you add them all up, you will be able to recover your original signal. And uh, with this, uh, it's still the same implement it's still the same uh, detection scheme as your DSBSC. Okay? And uh, you just only need to design a filter that has that uh, that satisfies rather the conditions for a vestigial sideband filter right here. And that's how you produce and transmit 
a vestigial sideband wave. Okay? You can also add a carrier for your VSB for your vestigial sideband. If you do this, you'll be able to use an envelope detector for your for your demodulation. Okay? But with the trade-off, since you have a, a less complex receiver, you're wasting power again by introducing a carrier. So this carrier does not offer any information to us, but it helps us detect the envelope and have a simpler receiver. Okay? So uh, lastly, to produce that, you just need to pass your uh, AM signal, full AM signal, to a VSB filter. And you get your VSB plus carrier. Okay. So now let's look at how we how do we analyze the how do we uh, analyze our high frequency signals okay as you can see uh, their the expressions are complicated maybe there is a way to analyze them so such that we won't have other uh, a complication of expressions using the cosine functions and the sine functions and so on and so forth so let this be a bandpass signal this is a general form of a bandpass signal We can rewrite this as the real part of this signal inside. So your A of T is a uh, A of T e to the j phi of T. A of T is a real signal. Phi of T is a real signal. But this combination here is a complex signal. Okay? So if you decompose this expression, To decompose this expression, there's an amplitude, a phase, and a carrier. This represents your carrier. It's a complex sinusoid. And this represents some band, uh, baseband signal, rather. Okay. Your message manifests as a time-varying envelope here. And this is some form of carrier. It's, it's kind of like M of T times C of T, a message and a carrier. So maybe we can use this message to represent the bandpass uh, band signal SBP of T. Okay. Just a note here, this FC should be much, much greater than the bandwidth of your baseband signal for this to be valid. Okay. And with that, if this is the spectrum of your bandpass signal, Okay. This is the spectrum of your bandpass signal. If we convert that to a baseband signal, like right here, you will see that the spectrum will be translated right here. It will become this spectrum, which is non-Hermitian in symmetry. So it's not symmetric. Uh, it does not satisfy the Hermitian symmetry, which makes this a complex signal not a real signal. And with this, if, if this is your frequency spectrum, we're, we, can easily, we can easily solve for the different properties of the signal. We can see different properties of a signal. Okay. So how does it work? So your bandpass signal can be simplified into these two components. There's a cosine component and then there's a sine component. And we can express that as this. The real part of SI of T plus J S Q of T right, times E to the J 2 pi F C T. This is your complex carrier and this is your complex baseband. So we can now define this right here. We can now define this as an in-phase component and this can now be defined as a quadrature component. Okay. And we can now transform... Uh, from earlier, we can get the envelope of the wave by getting the Pythagorean sum, right? So the sum of the squares, the square of the sum of the squares of each sig of each component, and the angle is the tangent inverse of s q of t and s i of t. So this property right here is a property of vectors, right? 
if SI is your X component, and SQ is your Y component, then A of T here is the magnitude, and Phi of T here is the phase of the vector. So these signals exude or uh, create some properties that are inherent of vectors, which tells us that, which kind of tells us that all uh, time varying signals are actually vectors. But that's a topic reserved for your higher course. Okay. Anyway, so with this, uh, by getting the complex envelope of your complex carrier wave, we get the baseband equivalent of our bandpass signal. Okay. And with this, uh, instead of analyzing the bandpass signals, we can analyze the baseband representations okay, of your signals. And uh, in terms of practicality, you will be able to simulate your baseband signals compared to your bandpass signals because they are in the baseband. And as you recall, the baseband, uh, baseband signals are easier to process with our conventional machines because of the low sampling rate compared to your frequency of operation, okay? And by doing this, you transform the frequency domain of your real bandpass signal into a complex baseband signal. You take the positive frequency spectrum, translate it to the baseband, okay? That translate its shape to the baseband and you get your complex baseband signal. And the amplitude of that is twice the amplitude of your, or the magnitude of your real bandpass signal, okay? So in linear continuous wave modulation, we can decompose each type of uh, continuous wave modulation into its in-phase and quadrature component. Your AM wave only has an in-phase component, okay? Your DSBSC also has an in-phase component only. Your SSB has a sine and a cosine carrier, so that's why you have uh, two components, an in-phase and a quadrature. Your SSB also, the same. Your VSP uh, with an upper sideband and a lower sideband also takes on this form. If you add the VSB plus carrier also, then your in-phase component will have, a, will have a carrier component. Okay? But your uh, vestigial sideband will have the same quadrature component right here. All right? So basically, if you're able to express your bandpass filter in this form, it has a cosine carrier and a sine carrier, you'll be able to convert your uh, signal into its complex baseband equivalent. And with that, you'll be able to analyze the, si the signals e much easier, much more easier compared to your, uh, compared to this form. And you'll be able to easy, uh, easily simulate them, actually. And this will, this topic of converting your signal to a base band, complex baseband equivalent will also pop up when we talk about frequency modulation or angle continuous wave modulation. And that will be the topic for the next meeting. So that's the end of this lecture. So I hope you learned a lot and you enjoyed learning. Anyway. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. See you next meeting.